Why was meaningful friendship between the son of King Saul, namely Jonathan, and David, who later became a king after Saul? Let's see what was behind the scenes. History is meaningful if we learn from it. Technology changed a lot, but the basic human feelings and needs are the same. This episode part of a series which speaks about people who are mentioned in the Bible. Thanks for all who may would like to support this channel. Please, if you can subscribe or give a like or a meaningful comment. In the description you may find other opportunities to support this channel. Enjoy. The Bible in Living English tells us what happened. And the spirit of Jehovah had gone away from Saul, and a bad spirit from Jehovah used to overwhelm him. And Saul's officers said to him, There is a bad divine spirit overwhelming you, say the word, sir. Your servants are before you. Have them look up a man expert as a liar player, and when there is a bad divine spirit on you, he shall play his music and you will be better. And Saul said to his officers, Pick me out a man who plays well and bring him to me. And one of the henchmen answered, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite who is expert at playing, and a man of energy and a fighter, and discreet in word, and a fine figure, and Jehovah is with him. And Saul sent messengers to Jesse, and said, Send me your son David, the one who is with the sheep. And Jesse took a load of bread and a bag of wine and one kid and sent them to Saul by his son David. And David came to Saul and presented himself before him, and Saul took a great liking to him and had him as squire. And Saul sent word to Jesse. Let David be in my service, because I like him. And when there was a divine spirit on Saul David would take his lyre and play his music, and Saul would be easier and better, and the bad spirit would go away from him. Jonathan's special friendship with David dates from soon after he killed Goliath. That fearless act in defense of Jehovah's people must have particularly moved Jonathan. Hearing David's account of it, Jonathan's very soul became bound up with the soul of David, and Jonathan began to love him as his own soul. The two courageous warriors and devoted servants of God proceeded to conclude a covenant of friendship. Jonathan could see that David had God's spirit. He did not jealously view him as a rival, as did Saul. And on the next day a bad divine spirit seized upon Saul and he fell under the power in the house, while David was playing his music as he did on any day, and Saul had a spear in his hand. And Saul hurled the spear and thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David dodged away from him, twice. And Saul was afraid of David, because Jehovah was with him and had gone away from Saul. After that Saul appointed David as the leader of more than a thousand warriors in order to have him murdered in battle. However, David was successful in battle because God was with him, and this increased David's popularity. But Saul was delighted to learn that Michal, his daughter, was now in love with David. Why? That was in his mind. I will give her to him and have her be a bait to trap him, and the hands of the Philistines come on him. So he promised if David killed 100 Philistines, Saul would give his daughter Michal in marriage. David accepted the challenge despite not considering himself deserving to be the king's son-in-law. Saul had hoped that David would be killed by the Philistines, but instead he came back triumphant and married Michal. David frightened Saul because he knew Jehovah God was with him. Jonathan, the son of King Saul, had become to be a close friend of David and had given him his belt, sword, and bow. They promised to keep their friendship going. Jonathan was instructed by Saul to kill David but he kept his word and warned David that his life was in danger instead of assaulting. He then praised David in front of Saul and got the king to swear not to hurt David. One another time, when David was playing his lyre for King Saul after another triumph over the Philistines. The king, in his anger, flung his spear at David, but David ducked out of the way. David escaped his house after the spear struck the wall. Saul assigned men to David's home to keep an eye on it and then assassinate him the next morning. And David's wife Michal told him, If you do not get your life into safety tonight, you will be put to death tomorrow. And Michal let David down through the window, and off he went, and fled away and made his escape. And Michal took the teraphim and put it in the bed, and put the goat's hair netting at its head, and covered it with the blanket. And Saul sent messengers to get David, and she said, He is sick, 
But Saul said to the soldiers, Bring him up to me in the bed to be put to death. And when the soldiers went into his house, recognized in David's bed only an idol was. During that time David fled to Ramah to meet with Samuel and tell him all that Saul had done to him. Jonathan and David met in secret, as arranged by David. They vowed to be kind to one another and their families. The new moon feast occurred the following day, and David was expected to eat with the king, but he decided to hide in a field instead. Jonathan agreed to inform David if Saul was still furious and had any plans to kill him. To let David know whether it was okay to stay or required to escape, they set up a covert signal that involved an arrow being shot. After that conversation David went to the field. When the new moon feast arrived, the king sat down to eat, and noticed that, David not was there, but Saul did not said anything about it. But next day, when at the table David's place was still empty, Saul asked. How comes it Jess's son did not come to the meal either yesterday or today? Jonathan explained that David was in Bethlehem with his family offering a sacrifice. But Saul was in great anger to Jonathan, and he said. I know you are associated with Jess's son to bring shame yourself and to your family. As long as he lives you will not become king. Send David to me so I can kill him. Why should he be put to death? What has he done? Jonathan inquired, but in a fit of rage, Saul threw Jonathan with his spear. Without a doubt, David's life was in big danger. Jonathan went the field where David was hiding early the next morning. Run and find the arrows I shoot, he instructed the young child who was accompanying him. The child discharged an arrow past him as he ran. Jonathan called out the covert signal they had created to alert David when the boy arrived at the spot where his arrow had struck. Is the arrow not past you? Hurry, go, run, don't stop. The youngster went back to his master after picking up the arrow. Jonathan handed the youngster his weapons and instructed him to return to town with them. Following the boy's departure, David emerged from hiding and knelt down in front of Jonathan three times, his face lowered to the ground. David cried the hardest as they hugged and kissed one other. David was told to leave in peace by Jonathan since they had made a friendship oath in the Lord's name. God will always be a witness between us, as well as between our descendants and your descendants. The two friends walked away. Jonathan went back to his house as David left to go into hiding.